The body is a reflection of our thoughts and our belief systems, and it shows us uh, in a myriad of ways of what it needs to heal. And if we are to be healthy, then we've got to take responsibility for our body. It's us. So we need to be responsible. I mean, who else is responsible for our health and well-being if not us? So it is time that um, people kind of stare that in the face. And as confronting as it is and tough as it is, you're the, at the same time, you're the secret to healing it. So there's, there is that upside of confronting that thought, but there's nothing to worry about there because you didn't do it deliberately. You don't need to beat yourself up over it. It's like this, Julie. Short-term thoughts create short-term symptoms in the body. Long-term thoughts create long-term symptoms in the body. And most of these thoughts that are creating the most amount of damage, we're not aware of them. And the body needs to bring that to our attention in some way or another. So it will manifest in, in some kind of cancer or a serious illness? Yeah, it depends on the intensity of those thoughts. Uh, the majority of illnesses, um, as you'll get to read in the All-Knowing Diary and what's at the root cause, you know, we know what it feels like when we hate ourselves. If we have to be in a situation where we're worried we're going to fail or we don't like the way we look, we know how that feels immediately. Like if I have that thought now and I hold that for 10 seconds, I know how that's going to make me feel. Well, imagine subconsciously if you were holding on to that thought your whole life. It causes some pretty severe damage. And that's where people need to look. So, Dan, why do we listen to some of our body's messages like we were talking about before, but not all of them? Is it because we're too frightened to go there? For some, we don't have the awareness that our body speaks to us above and beyond thirst, hunger and fatigue. Uh, we're so brought into a, a society where I've got a headache, well, take a Panadol, you know. Um, I've got a stomachache, well, take this digestive aid. It's not c commonplace yet that as a child experiences these things that they're told, well, have a look and what's going, see what's going on there. Have a look at what thought you just had and what created that. That's not commonplace. So a large part of it has been this massive gap in the education sector that needs to be responsible for educating the youth and adults on far more than just academia but on how our thoughts affect us and our reality. So it's it's comes down to a lack of education, whether that's from schooling or from parents, and a lack of awareness from those people as well. So really, if we're looking at, we're looking at the causes, the root causes of them, it's kind of like homeopathy for the soul, I guess. Yeah, look, every symptom in our life, whether it's something manifesting in a physical body, something manifesting in our child, something manifesting in our relationship between our partner, there is a thought going on behind that. I had this really interesting experience um, with a friend of mine now who, uh, who's also a GP and we met on holidays and uh, we're about to go on a chocolate tour and he said to me, oh, Dan, I can't. I get migraines from chocolate. And having the capability, obviously, that, that, that we have at uh, at you know, UI group and, and what we teach in the all-knowing diary, I said, hang on a second. That's not why you get migraines. You do not get migraines from chocolate. And the problem in, in, in a lot of the kind of scientific world is everything's kind of evidence-based, physical evidence. So you go chocolate, migraine. But there's a lot happening in between those two events that cannot be seen in the physical world. That's what we call thought. So I tuned into him and I said, oh, let's have a look at really where that migraine's coming from. And what happens is because he was raised with such um, discipline and being strict, when he was young, he was slapped, condemned for having chocolate, okay? And every time he deviates from that discipline, he was condemned. But he's not aware of it. No. So what's transpiring subconsciously is reach for the chocolate Condemn myself for not being disciplined. Guilt. Guilt, migraine. He doesn't get migraines from chocolate. He gets migraines from guilt. Wow, that's pretty big. Mm. You, and it's interesting to see how many other areas in our life 
um, that well, manifest. Absolutely. Like we, we had a, another um, beautiful client come to us and she would say, oh, I get severe migraines um, from my period. And I, of course, Juno said, you do not get migraines from your period. But that, if you look at it from a medical standpoint, that's all you see, period, migraines. But when you look at it through the eyes of your intuition, through whole brain intelligence, what you see is period, depression, beating yourself up during that space of depression because you start eating a pack of Tim Tams and you start condemning yourself, then the migraine. And resistance okay? to that process too, that... I mean, this is this is a you know this particular example is actually a big one for women, really, and all of those premenstrual and and Absolutely. symptoms that happen. So it's kind of like, this is what actually happens in our body at this period of time. So I guess can we talk about expand that a little bit and talk about how society's beliefs about what happens in in a something like that, whereas across the whole world globally, there's yeah. a belief about. Well, those look, any, anything, any situation, behaviour, state of being, activity where there is um, kind of some sense of self abuse, guilt, self hatred, is going to be met with some severe symptoms in the body, and often because we're only looking at it on a physical level, all we see is half the picture, but it is time, and this is. The, the gift that's in that book, that we connect into our all-knowing brain to see beyond just what's in the physical, to actually see what's behind it, what's at the root cause. And you've got a great little section in the book, Dan, about those root causes to actually give everyone a little bit of a heads up. You know, if this is what's happening in my body and it's settled here, then maybe this is, you know, what the cause of it is. And so it's, I guess it's no accident then that if we're feeling pressure we might get a headache. No, absolutely. The body responds to our thoughts. We know. We know how the body responds when we have sexual thoughts. We know how the body responds when we have stressful thoughts. Well, it's no different. It doesn't just decide, well, if you've got self-hating thoughts, then I won't reflect them. Okay? Every thought is reflected in some way. It's our direct feedback loop. But, yeah, the book goes into detail as to what is the root cause of breast cancer, what's the root cause of uh, ovarian cancer. There's some two very big topics at the moment. Where does multiple sclerosis come from uh, and how do you cure that? What's it, how do you solve that? And the beauty of you know, having access to all-knowing is that all these massive questions that people um, are suffering from, they can actually get answers to now. But even just to be aware, Dan, that there's a reason for a certain way of thinking and a certain way of being, just to put light on, as you say, something that's going on in your thinking can be enough to really make a significant change in your life. Absolutely. Awareness and truth is what heals the body, okay? Lies and denial is what creates the illness. And, and once again, the irony is that this is just a phase. Experiencing illness and disease and dying prematurely, this is a phase of our ev evolution. And it's simply a byproduct of not using our whole brain, of not tapping into that very natural, all knowing part of ourselves. And you will see, we'll get to a point where these things just do not happen. Because when we're looking at it through intuitive eyes and we're shining the light of truth, the body has no need to manifest it as an illness. So in terms of what we can do in our everyday life, really is to be aware of what's going on in our body, not to be attached to our body, of course, but to be aware of those little signs, those signals that might be saying, hey, you need to have a break or, hey, you know, you're, you're really angry about something and you're refusing to look at it. Yeah, look, the, the body is the greatest messenger on how you need to be tackling your life and how you need to be navigating it. But ultimately, get connected to your higher self. Read the book so you can understand uh, how, to, how that process works so that when you do have a question, that you also have the answer. Uh, this, this paradigm where we're without answers, where everything's a mystery, where we don't know how the universe was created, we don't know how to cure cancer, this, is, to be honest, is an absolute joke because all the answers are sitting right under our nose. But whilst we're so invested in this purely scientific physical world and we're not looking to what's in here, which we've been taught for thousands of thousands of years, these symptoms are going to keep growing and manifesting.